We are witnesses to the love God has poured into us. We are witnesses of God's love, sharing it with each person we meet. We are witnesses to everyone we encounter, little children like us, sisters and brothers in God's family. When we are confused, Lord, give us peace. When we are afraid, Lord, give us peace. When we're lost in grief, Lord, give us peace. O God, meet us in this room and grant us peace. Amen.
Let us bow our heads in the opening prayer. Lord, we come before you today with our minds and hearts open to your world and the message you would have us have for us. We humbly ask forgiveness for those things which we did, spoke, and thought that were not pleasing to you. Help us this day to be better followers of your message and to strive in our lives to live the lessons taught by your Son, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need. Scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, and verses 36 through 48. Hear now these words. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them. But they were startled and frightened and supposed that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you, why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands, my feet. That is, I myself, handle me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see I have. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I have spoken to you, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day, rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. May God bless to our understanding and enrichment the words from his holy book.
May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our sermon title today is Christ Among Us. Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled. They thought he was dead. This morning we continue with the theme of resurrection and the fact that Christ lives beyond his death and his resurrection. We will talk about Jesus as he lives among us through his spirit, through the spirit of those who have gone before us, and for those resurrection experiences we have in our daily lives. Jesus stood among them by the Sea of Galilee, and they, the disciples, thought he was a ghost. He invited them to touch and see. Put your hand on my wounds. He then said, children, do you have anything to eat? And they fed him some fish, thus proving to the disciples that he was indeed alive, and they witnessed his resurrection. This was not just an appearance. Jesus had a purpose in illustrating to the disciples that through the years he had fed them and washed their feet, and now, as he is fed, the disciples were to feed others and give his followers the words of eternal life. This is the beginning of the church. Jesus reminds them of their history. There was Moses, there was the prophets, there were the Psalms, all three of which were in, fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And now Jesus passes the faith to the disciples to begin the church and share the law, the prophets, and the love of God with all people. That is the power of resurrection faith. As the church, we continue this great legacy of sharing our resources and talents with those who knock on our doors and those who are beyond our doors. This resurrection faith is eternal. It is quite common for those of us who have lost loved ones through death to visit cemeteries for Easter. The graves are decked with beautiful spring flowers representing new life. While we know that our loved ones may be in their final resting place bodily, they are not there. Our loved ones reside in our hearts. This week, as Billy Evans, the Capitol Police officer, was honored in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol, he was killed by an insurrectionist. As he lies there in state, the casket draped by the United States flag, his young wife began to cry. The one who comforted her first was her little daughter who reached up to dry her tears. It takes a long time to feel the power of death and in her innocently, lovingly cared for her mother. It has been my experience that this little girl and her siblings will one day move from the shock of that experience and realize the loss of their daddy. The loss of their daddy will leave a hole in their life, 
but our faith proclaims that their daddy will always dwell in their hearts. My father died when I was 11 years old, and I could relate to those kids. And it was my family and the church who assured me that there was life after death, and the memory of our dad would live on. The church witnesses to the power of resurrection and others have, who have had similar loss and share the stories of bouncing back, of moving on, and living often in the memory of the one who has passed from us. Just as the disciples were witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus, we also are witnesses to the power of resurrection and new life. And just as there are so many witnesses at a trial of someone who died like George Floyd, who tell the story differently, each of us may share our stories of resurrection differently as we witness to the resurrection of Jesus and our loved ones. And then there is the resurrection spirit that lives within our daily lives. Through this year, called a pandemic, slowly and gradually we are pulling out of our old doldrums into feeling more liberated and freer again. We yearn for the day when we will worship together in our church. We have experienced church through Zoom, and in many ways, we've gotten to know each other in ways we wouldn't have otherwise done so. But we miss the hugs. We miss the firm handshakes, the long, loving looks of affection for each other. We need community, and we celebrate the reopening of the doors. And I don't know about you, but I miss singing to the top of my lungs in church, even if it sounds like a joyful noise. I think of those who have suffered brokenness in relationships, whether it be separation among friends over disputes or divorce. There is life after disputes. There is life after brokenness, and there is certainly life after divorce. The sudden loss of separation is replaced by new relationships, and new relationships can be so exciting. Resurrection faith is watching our children grow out of childhood and into adulthood. My great-grandnephew uh, called me to ask my opinion on colleges which he would, to which he was accepted. He was from Missouri, and he has been accepted to Ohio State University in Columbus, as well as several other reputable schools. Being a Cincinnati graduate, I swallowed hard and swallowed my pride to, insert, to, uh, to endorse the virtues of Ohio State University, a rival among my peers. But what an honor to be called by my nephew who says, Uncle Dave, tell me about Ohio State and Columbus. After I hung up, I thought, where did Sam get that deep bass voice? He has grown before my eyes, and we celebrated it as I called his grandfather, my brother, to share the good news about the phone call, and then the two of us bragged about our kids and our grandkids. Resurrection faith! Resurrection is not just about physical death. It is dying to the old and welcoming the new each day. This spring, we welcome the beautiful flowers and vegetables as they emerge from the frozen turf. The golf clubs then, the tennis rackets, get dusted off as spring offers new hope for better games. We discard the old putter for a new one, just in case it was the putter's fault why we missed that short uh, putt. UC's basketball team will return to the NCAA. The failure in school will turn into success as we finally get it, we finally get it, and the kid that is so hard to teach finally understands the learnings that we have been so hard to teach. Resurrection faith. Christ lives among us. Christ lives amongst us as the disciples witnessed his presence around the Sea of Galilee. Christ lives amongst us as we become the church and celebrate life after the death of our loved ones. 
And Christ lives amongst us <clears throat> as we live out our lives with the ups and downs that, throw li th that life throws our way. He lives. He lives. I know Christ Jesus, he lives. He lives within my heart. Christ lives among us. Amen. As we bow in prayer to God today, I would invite you to focus on those folks who are close to you or in distant, who uh, are perhaps in need of prayer, or perhaps you need prayer today. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for the power of resurrection faith, the faith that Jesus Christ gave so freely for us. New life, new hope, new joy. We pray for those who are suffering this day. It may be an illness. It may be a death in the family or a loved one. And so as they go through that process of grief, we pray that they might be visited by the spirit of resurrection and may come out of those strong feelings into life everlasting. Teach us to have hope. Teach us to move on. Teach us to experience the joy that is intended for us. Oh God, we pray for the world who seems to be in constant turmoil. We pray for peace throughout the world. May we listen to each other. May we hear each other's voices. May we pray for one another as uh, you have constantly prayed for us. And now hear us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, be and abide in each and every one of your hearts. And may the resurrection spirit be alive in you this Easter season as we celebrate life and look for new hope and new joy in the future. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this day at uh, Mount Adams Pilgrim Chapel. We welcome all who are seeking and desiring the presence of Christ in their life. All are welcome here. We're especially thankful that you joined us in cyberspace, and we hope soon that we'll be able to meet together in person. Until that time, be safe and well, everyone.